Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is James and I am continuing on with this Barnstormer 25S kit. All right, so here's what I need to do to kind of finish this, this plane up. Um, if you remember the last two videos, I spent a lot of time looking at the control linkages and setting all that stuff up. So I still need to just go through and, and just make sure everything's lined up and I have the proper throws on the different control surfaces. And um, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on that because those other videos were pretty, pretty lengthy. So I'm going to make a few comments and do a, do a few things, but just kind of move on from there. And I'll do a lot of my sort of like other fine tuning of this stuff kind of off, off video. All right, the other thing I need to do is I, I got to um, hook up the engine. Um, I have the, uh, the, the fuel tubing, got to put on the muffler, got to put on the, um, the propeller. And uh, I got a couple comments about the fuel tank. I had someone make a comment on, um, on, on the channel and he had a really good point. So I want to bring up what, what he was talking about. So I got to get that set up. Okay, and the other thing I need to do is I need to put the wheels on. Um, that'll be pretty easy. And let's see what else. I'm gonna pack the, uh, the receiver and the battery in, but I'm gonna hold off on kind of finalizing where I put that until I kind of do a, um, I need to check the airplane for its weight and for its center of balance. So um, before I finalize where I put the battery and the, um, and the receiver, I wanna check that first, just in case I have to move things around a little bit. All right, so the other thing I'm going to just take a quick look at is also going to be the, um, the wing loading. Um, they don't give a specification for a wing loading in the kit, but they do give a weight of 53 to 56 ounces. And um, considering that it's basically a trainer, a trainer, I would assume that the wing loading is going to be sort of like moderate to, to low. Um, so I'm just going to check that. I'm going to check the weight against what they say here. And if it's close to that, I'm not going to worry too much about it. All right, so let's take a um, look at the uh, control surfaces and the, um, the throw or the distance that the control surfaces are supposed to travel um, per the instructions in the, um, in the kit. So for the um, aileron, we have 5 sixteenths of an inch of travel, which is going to be 5 sixteenths of an inch like that. Um, for the elevator, it's supposed to have 5 sixteenths of an inch also. And then the rudder is going to be um, 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna make an assumption. Um, because this is a trainer kit, um, and it's made to obviously help new pilots train how to fly, I'm going to assume that the, um, the settings for the control throws are gonna be on the conservative side, meaning that they're not gonna be very aggressive. Um, they're gonna have a, low, a lower amount of throw, just so the plane does not kind of, they're, kind of, they're gonna kind of build in um, you know, less erratic flight behavior um, by, by limiting the throw of the control surfaces. So I'm gonna assume that's what these, um, what the, that's what these settings are. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I, since I have two settings on my, on my um, system, I have a high and a low, um, which is pretty common these days to have uh, at least two settings like that. I'm going to use the um, designated throws as my low. And then I'm probably gonna have them move a little bit more. Um, so I'll adjust things so they move a little bit more for my high setting. So I think, um, I think that could be a good idea that could work out for me. And so at least I'll have the low setting will be what the factory wanted or what the um, designers wanted. And then the high setting will be, will be a little bit more aggressive. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the um, elevator and rudder real quick here. So what I do is in this case, I leveled the, um, I leveled the elevator out. Uh, you can see it there. And I made that level. I just used some blocks to hold it up. And um, I can see by doing that, when I put my level on there, I can see that my elevator is um, drooping a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple adjustments to get that kind of leveled up. And then we'll check the throw after that. Okay, so I, um, I made some adjustments um, on the control horn with the clevis. And I just brought the elevator, I just brought it up a little bit. Okay, so I think we're pretty good to go here. Again, my elevator's level. And in this case, this works out pretty good to use the table. So I'm gonna use this thing right here. This is called a, this is a, I guess it's called a rafter square. Now, <clears throat> this is Empire, <clears throat> Empire rafter square. This is basically used by construction workers when they're doing framing and such. Don't ask me how it works. 
but I saw this um, at the hardware store and I thought this is a really cool thing because it's it's, it's square and then it has obviously measure um, it has measurements on it so I can go ahead and put this like this for example right on my right on my table and if I'm assuming I'm I'm level then I can go ahead and I can check my my throw up and down I'm gonna go ahead and go up so man, I got like almost a whole, I have a, almost an inch of movement on my elevator. That's a lot, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce that to get it closer to the specs. Okay, so I have to reduce the amount of movement on the elevator. So what I wanna do is when I'm setting these things up, I want to mechanically get them as close as I can and then minimize the amount of trimming I have to do um, on the um, transmitter and the servo. So I'm going, to I'm going to try to mechanically get everything to, to get as close as possible. So there's something to think about, and a lot of people may know this, but some people may not really think about this, and this could be helpful if you're trying to um, adjust things. So on the servo, the greatest amount of movement you're going to get is going to be on the outermost hole, and the least amount of movement you're going to get is going to be on the innermost hole. Okay? The opposite is true. I'm talking about movement at the control surface. The opposite is true when you look at the control horn. So on the control horn, in this example on the rudder, the greatest amount of movement is gonna be on the innermost hole close to the close to the hinge, and the least amount of movement is gonna be on the outermost hole. Now somewhere in between those two zones, like sort of like the middle of the control horn, and then like the middle of the uh, servo arm will be sort of like a moderate amount of movement if you wanna kinda of look at it that way. Okay, so if you keep that relationship in mind when you're working on your plane, that may help you sort of kind of make adjustments without having to guess. Now, I realize it may be very intuitive and it may be very straightforward for a lot of people, but some people may, may find that kind of useful to think about it that way. So again, for the maximum amount of movement you want, you're going to want your control horn to be on the innermost setting or the innermost hole and then the outermost hole on the um, servo arm. For the least amount of movement in that system, you would have the servo, um, the hole in the innermost hole on the servo arm, and then the outermost um, hole on the control horn. And then obviously in between those two extremes is going to be the sweet spot that you're looking for. So you'll just have to make adjustments with the holes and um, maybe just adjust one over here or just one, just one on this side. But either way, you just have to find that right combo. Okay, so since I have so much movement on the elevator, I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna go ahead and move my control, um, my clevis inward. I'm gonna probably go ahead and put it all the way into the innermost. I think I need to do that, go that far with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. I'll pop this off and I'll put it in that, that position and then we'll see how, how much movement we have, if we, how much we've, re we've reduced the movement. All right, so I made my adjustment. So what I ended up doing is I ended up putting it on the second from the from the inside hole on the on the servo arm, and then I had to move up the um, clevis to the outermost hole on the uh, on the control horn. And by doing those two things, I sort of found the best spot for kind of reducing the total amount of movement. I still have a lot of movement on there, so like I said, the, the kit called for five sixteenths, which I'm going to round up to three eighths. So if I go, if I do this real quick here, I'm a little about, I'm about, I'm about an eighth of an inch or so, a little bit about an eighth of an inch below five on my measuring scale. And I go up and I'm about an eighth of an inch, I'm at, I'm at three eighths of an inch. So I basically got about a half inch of movement um, on the elevator. Okay, so I have about a half inch of movement on the elevator up and down and the kit called for 5 sixteenths of an inch of movement up and down. So that means I'm about 3 sixteenths more movement in both directions than the kit calls for. But like I said, I'm going to go ahead and use the kit as my sort of conservative, my low setting and then I want my high setting to be a little bit, little bit higher. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as my setting for right now, basically half inch of throw. And then of course I could always adjust it on, um, on the transmitter with the servo later but I'm gonna leave it like that and then when I do go to adjust the low setting um, when I use the low when I do this throughout the programming 
I'll just reduce the amount of Thoreau for the low setting. I'll probably take it to like 75% or something like that. And that will, that will set, that'll be my low setting and then I'll have a high setting. Okay, well I hope that wasn't confusing. That may have been a lot to sort of listen to. I realized I was kind of everywhere talking about that. But um, hopefully that made a lot of hopefully that made sense. Okay, now I need to look at the rudder, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend time um, on the video with the rudder. It's gonna be a similar process. What I'll do is I'll look down on it like this, and um, oops, here we go, and I'll make my measurements. I have a lot of movement in here. I'm only supposed to have like five eighths, so I'll reduce this down to probably about like an inch 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 or so from my high setting, and then on my low setting I'll go down to the five eighths. But I'll do that off camera. All right, so a real quick note about the ailerons. So the ailerons are a little more complicated um, because like the elevator and the rudder, um, the ailerons have to be sort of centered um, correctly on the wing itself. So what you have to do, obviously, with the ailerons is the ailerons have to not only be in line with the wing, but they also have to be in line with each other. So it takes a little more thinking to get the ailerons to sort of line up. And it is a you know trial and error. You have to um, do your best at it. But let me um, show you what I'm going to do here just, just quickly. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use my, just, just by eyeballing it, I'm going to try to get everything lined up um, to, the, to the best I can just, just eyeballing it. All right, so then once I kind of get my do my best try at that, I try to fine tune it. So what I do is I put my wing on a on a support like I have it on here, and what I do is I want I'm going to assume that my table's kind of level and flat. And that's going to be the base that I measure things off of, and then I want to want to do is I want to make sure my wing or I want to get my wing level, um, and the way I'm going to do that, you know, it's got a it's got a dihedral in it, so the wing itself isn't going to be level, but I want to make sure that overall it's the same that that it's level with the table. So what I do is I measure on the wing, like for example, the wing tip, I'm at about 10, oops, it's about 10 and a 16th, 10 inches and a 16th um, from, the, from, the, from the surface of the table on that tip. And then I come over here, oops, excuse my camera, and maybe hard to see, but I'm about 10, 10 and a 16th on this side too. So what that tells me is, I'm assuming that I built my wing straight, right? That tells me that the wing is oriented correctly, and all I have to do is measure the ailerons off of the table. So if I measure the aileron off of the table, um, for example, on this one I'm at, I'm about 10, oops, sorry, I'm a little bit, I'm at just about 10 inches off the table. If I come over here to this side, excuse the camera, jumping everywhere, but I'm jumping around here. If I come to this side, let me put this on here. I'm right there. Oops. Pretty close, right? So what that tells me is, is that the ailerons are relatively level, or should I say in line with each other. They're in line with the wing and they're in line with each other. Now I'm going to check them, kind of double check and everything else. But I think that's kind of a good way to do it. You can just go ahead and set it up like this and you can measure off the table. And then you can go ahead and measure your, your ailerons and kind of make your adjustments. Okay, so then as we remember, we had um, 5 16 of an inch of movement or throw. And this is going to be more than 5 16 of an inch. I can, I can tell that very easily. So again, I'm going to go ahead and make my adjustments like I did with these other with the other um, control surfaces. To reduce it, I'm going to make it higher than 5 16ths because I want it to be a little bit more aggressive um, on my high setting. But I'll just play with it, I'll adjust it, and I'll get that lined up, and um, that'll be it for the control surfaces. Okay, well I did want to add one little more note about this about the control surfaces, and then we'll move on. Um, so obviously. The assumptions that I'm making here is that I built everything kind of straight and true. Well, I know that's not the case. I know that there's a little bit of, you know, deflection in the wing here and there. You know, I sanded this down maybe a little bit more than this side. So if I'm talking like looking at a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch, um, 
there's probably no way I'm going to get it exact. Um, you, you know, I think I know that on the elevator, for example, I think that I have an overall kind of uh, out of out of whack by about an eighth of an inch across the in, the entire length of the elevator. So that's just sort of the nature of the beast. Um, you know, this is a wood frame and just, you know, I didn't build it perfectly. So I'm going to do my best at getting everything lined up. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to check. I'm going to check it out. When I get out in the field, I'm going to stand back from the airplane. I'm going to get down on my on the ground and look at it from different angles and just kind of make sure everything looks OK before that first maiden flight. And then, of course, once I do the maiden flight, once I get the plane in the air, um, then that's when you really find out how you're going to have to tune your plane up. So um, you just got to be prepared for that. And hopefully you got everything close enough where the plane flies um, relatively nicely. <laughs> and it doesn't do some kind of erratic thing and, and obviously crash or um, give you too much trouble. But, you know, we do our best and I think, um, you know, it's never gonna be, you know, perfect, perfectly perfect. At least, at least when I build, it isn't. All right, so go ahead and move on to the next few steps. All right, so um, my next step is I'm gonna go ahead and get the um, engine um, put together. Um, but before I do that, I did want to address a, um, a really good comment I had and it's on, um, it's referring to my video number 23 where I was putting the engine on and I was putting the, um, the tank in. I mean, I had a really good comment um, from a person, Rodney, who was pointing out that when I put my tank in, I didn't um, add a tube, like tubing and a clunk onto my um, filling line. So as you remember, so this one's gonna, so this line is the throttle, this line is the muffler, and then I had, oops, I had this line here which is the, um, the one, the, the line that I used to fill up the tank. Well, what I didn't do and what I didn't think about doing was to put a, um, a line inside the tank. I just basically had the, the, the brass tubing going in and I didn't add a line or a clunk to, to that. Now, the reason that's important or it's a good idea is it helps you if you wanna use this line to drain the tank. Um, I don't have to resort to just pulling off the, uh, the throttle to drain the tank. I can drain the tank using the same line that I that I had for the um, for the for the filling um, the filling tube, so um, yeah, it's very useful. It's a, it's that's why the clunk is there for the um, for the filling tubing also, and that was a really good comment. And I appreciate I appreciate Rodney um, pointing pointing that out. So um, let me show you real quick, just so you know what I'm talking about, to just make sure that just you understand a little bit better. All right, so just a little quick sketch, just in case. Um, I know some people know what I'm talking about. Other people may not be um, completely understand what I'm talking about. So let me just draw a quick little sketch. So um, I'm just going to draw an engine sitting here. Excuse my drawing. Boy, that sucks. Hold on a second. I'll try that again. All right, so my engine is going to be just going to draw my engine here. The prop is here, right? And then the tank is going to be, and we'll put our muffler right here okay and then of course the tank is going to be back here somewhere with your stopper so you have the throttle carburetor is right here so you have one line that goes goes um straight into your tank and then it has a hose on it with a clunk on the end and then you also have another line which is your vent which comes off of your uh comes off of your muffler it goes in and then it comes up and it kind of goes up to your vent up here, like that. And then you'll have a, a fuel line that goes in. And what I did is I stopped my fuel line and I just kind of let the, let the um, I just put it so that the brass tubing just kind of went straight in like that. And then I have my, my filler right here. So when I fill the tank up, obviously it's gonna work fine. I'll fill the tank up with the fuel. But what, um, what Rodney pointed out was that I should have put another clunk on here like this so that now when the fuel's low I can drain it out of the tank by using the um, by using the, uh, the, the the filling tube um, and then as I mentioned I can also do it from the from the carburetor if I don't have this which I don't I can always drain it by popping off the carburetor hose and doing it that way but yeah that was a really good point so I'll go back to number 23 if you're kind of wondering what I'm talking about you can check it out and um, yeah so anyhow thanks for the comment I appreciate any um, comments to, to point things out. 
Um, like I said, I'm not an expert at this, and I learn and I remember things, and I, and I appreciate any kind of comments that are that are helpful like that. All right, so first thing first, I'm going to go ahead and hook up the line to the to the carburetor. It's right there. I think I'm going to cut a little bit off. I don't want it to have too much of a bend in it, but I do want it to kind of <clears throat> go a little bit straighter than this. So uh, I'm going to cut off. I'll cut off a little bit. I don't want to cut off too much and then I'd end up with no, not enough. That would not be good. All right, so there's that guy. Simple enough there, right? It's good. And then I got to hook my, um, put the muffler on now before I can hook up this line. So let me get the pieces for my muffler. Now, I don't usually have a, um, the OS engines, these ones that I'm familiar with have been using, they don't normally have a, a gasket on the um, on the muffler but this one did come with a gasket but then in the process of kind of monkeying around with it and setting things up I tore that little gasket I was gonna leave it off but what I did is I made another one so this right here you can go to like any well not any but you can go to a hardware store like a, not a hardware store but an auto parts store and you can just buy gasket material it comes like in a rolled sheet at least the my local place it was just in a rolled sheet and you get a big chunk of it and you can just kind of cut your own gasket um, so what I did is I don't have any of that material in front of me but it's just like a kind of like a big piece of paper I just traced the old gasket and then I just cut it with an exacto blade and kind of just made it made it fit so it doesn't have to be perfect but it worked out pretty good so that's my little homemade gasket I've actually done that also for to replace the gasket on the back of like the crankcase um, on some engines so that's a good tip is you can get yourself you don't have to go buy like a specific gasket for an engine if you can possibly make it yourself um, out of some material like that. And then plus it's a lot cheaper. All right, so let me get this on here. I'll put this, these screws in. Like that. Throw my little homemade gasket on here. If I can get it. Okay. And this guy's gonna go on here. All right, so I need to go about somewhere right about there. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this on here. Hook it on there. All right, good. Okay, so we got our lines connected. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my, um, the muffler has an adjustable, I can rotate the, um, the nozzle, if you will, or the exhaust, um, the little exhaust hole. I'm gonna rotate it down because my wing's gonna be up here. So I think I wanna have my exhaust kind of pointing down and out away from the plane, not going up on top of the wing. Loosen it up a little bit. And I'm just going to rotate that. Probably something like that on a. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of like a little angle. So it'll sort of deflect it out that way. You know, it's not perfect. Go ahead and tighten this up now. And obviously these are settings that I'm making here in the um, in my garage. And uh, once I get this thing going, I'll make some adjustments out in the field. Oops. Okay, so we got our muffler set up to where we want it. And I think that's good. Oh, so now I'm going to put the, the, um, my propeller on. To start out with, I'm going to use this 10, 10 5. So it's a 10 inch diameter um, number 5 pitch um, propeller which is sort of the upper end for this engine. Um, I'll probably, after I get this plane flying and kind of broken in, I'll probably reduce it down to like maybe a 9.6 or a 9.8. Um, so the larger prop diameter and smaller pitch is gonna give me more thrust, but not a lot of, relatively less speed. But then if I go down to a smaller diameter, higher pitch prop, that's gonna give me a higher, kind of higher top end speed with less thrust. So, but right now I'm gonna go ahead and use this setup um, for the initial flights. Um, so if this was a four cycle engine, 
um, I would want to put probably like a like another like another retaining nut on here so I'd have sort of like a lock like a lock nut and then this hub would go on top of that and the reason I would do that on a four stroke is because the four strokes have a tendency to backfire or they can backfire and if they backfire they'll throw your they'll throw your, uh, your, your the nut off and the prop off um, you don't usually get a lot of backfiring with the two with a two stroke at least that I know of so this is going to be good good for me for here I don't know if this I think I got to get a bigger yeah I gotta, go, I gotta get a bigger um a bigger wrench for this all right so I got a bigger I'm gonna have to remember when I go out in the field that this little this was in my fuel I mean my um my field box it doesn't fit on here I'm gonna have to bring a bigger one of these just in case I break my prop or I can use the um oops I could use the the hole they give you here so I could take something like this screwdriver that fits yeah and I can do it that way tighten this up on here but then you have the chance of bending your thing on here bending your screwdriver so anyhow get this on here I don't want to go super tight but you want to do pretty snug I always worry that I'm gonna break something if I go too much with it but anyhow so that's good okay so I think the um, engine and prop is set up everything's ready to go there um, I'll have to do some final tuning and such when I get it running again just to make everything make sure everything's good but we're good with that for now all right so let's do the wheels so the um, if you look at the picture from the plane from the instructions you notice that the wheels that they had on here are sort of these kind of skinny kind of disc like looking wheels so those are sort of um, reminiscent of sort of the style of the airplane it sort of like gives you that, that kind of World War one monoplane kind of look I think that's kind of like those big kind of disc wheels are sort of a little bit characteristic of biplanes and that type of thing so that sort of goes with the uh, the style of this this kit um, I couldn't find too many options, so I did purchase these. These are the Debro. Um, these are two and a half inch. Um, what do I call these things? These are the Micro Sport wheels, two and a half inch. Uh, I'm not sure that these are going to be. Hopefully, they're going to be strong enough. They're pretty small and light, um, and they're foam. And then I'm going to have to drill this out to my um, to the size of my of the um, the, the landing gear. Um, I'm going to give these a try just because I want to see how they look and how they feel. But if they don't work out for me, then I can go and I'll use my old, um, I've had these in my, kind of like in my storage stuff, but these are just some Debro, uh, these are two and a quarter inch, just their standard, basically low bounce tires, wheels. So I'll put those on. These are kind of what I had on the original plane I had. Um, they look like this. They don't look bad. I think they look fine. And they're definitely going to be stronger than these. But I'm going to go ahead and see what these, how these things work out. And if I don't like them, you know, if I don't like them, I'll change them out. But I'm going to start with these, these ones. But I have to drill these out. So the size that I have to drill them out with, I can measure. They're, they're about a little over an eighth of an inch. I think I measured the other day. Little, yeah, so it's a little bit above eighth of an inch. So I'm going to drill these out um, off camera. Then I'll come back and we'll, um, we'll put them on. Okay, so I drilled these out, and um, let's see how they go on here. That, that. All right, yeah, they are skinny. So, um, all right, so let me go ahead and get my. I have some a couple collars I'm going to use. All this stuff was in my stash, so I have a couple. Oops couple of these old collars and a couple of big ones here I'll probably put these ones on the um on the inside so anyhow let me make a couple little measurements all right I'll do this side now I'm just putting these on loose I'm going to adjust them once I get so the inside retainer is just going to help the wheel from kind of pushing up against this angle. It probably wouldn't go over the angle, but 
that's just going to add friction, so I want to keep it away from that angle. That, this guy over here. And then I got these big dudes right here. And these are Phillips. I mean, yeah, Phillips. It's going to get it so it just barely grabs it so I can move it around easy. Okay, so it's not really important where it is on this little axle part of the landing gear. I don't want it all the way in. I don't want it all the way out. And I'm just going to kind of get it somewhere in the middle. Um, so I'm going to measure just for a kind of arbitrarily about a halfway, about halfway in. And then I'll go ahead and set my, my collars there. And I'll make sure that they have a little bit of room so that the uh, they can spin. So I think that's probably pretty good like that. So let me go ahead and again about a half inch like that and then this other dude back here again giving myself a little bit of room okay and that's going to loosen up as it as the plane wears in it's going to loosen up so i'm going to leave it just like that boy I don't know, those are kind of funky. We'll see how it, how it does. The key is that you want them to both to have the same resistance because if one is kind of stickier than the other, then that's gonna drag the airplane in that direction. So you wanna have free movement on both wheels or at least have equal movement um, so you don't have it tracking out of offline. You are gonna have some tracking off to the left because of the torque of the engine. So you'll compensate for that with a little bit of tail tail movement or something. But um, what can happen a lot of times is the plane, the wheels can get dirty. So you can get like one wheel that gets really grimy. And then all of a sudden you won't really realize it. And your plane's kind of going off to the side when you're trying to take off. And it's maybe just because you have to clean your the axles off, the clean the wheels out and get them moving good again. So I'm adjust this right here. Yeah. All right, so let me get this other side about where I want to go here. All right, so there's our wheels. Um, we'll see how they work. You know, being skinny like they are, there's a lot of play kind of this way, whereas if you had a, a wider wheel, you'd have less of that going on, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so I think this is looking pretty pretty slick right now. So. Um, these wheels don't actually don't look too bad. I like, I like the way they look. I just hope that they I hope that they hold up. So uh, yeah, we're good here. So uh, my next little step is going to be um, to mount the wing on here and have my battery and my my uh, receiver is going to be in here. I'm not going to again. I'm not going to mount it just yet, but I'm going to check the balance the um, the center of gravity. Um, on the plane. So we'll measure the center of gravity and we'll see where we are um, based on the plans and we'll go from there in terms of like setting up. Hopefully I don't have to move things around too far. Um, if I'm a little bit off one way or the other on the center of gravity it's not going to kill me but um, and I think it's going to be okay but let's go ahead and check that out um, next.